And we're on. Hello. Hello, Anne. And today's guest, we've got the beautiful Anne Rowan. Anne owns, sorry, I've had to write this down because it's a lot. Anne owns Chrissy's house. It's an on call 24 hour centre. Help response intervention surrounding suicide. So that's for people who have suicidal thoughts and for people who have lost somebody through suicide. Yes. So how are we, Annie? I'm fine, but I don't own suicide. I don't own Chrissy's house. I'm you the founder of Chrissy's house. founder of Chrissy's house. Um, Chrissy's house is a charity mm-hmm. um, that was set up because I lost my son, Christopher, to suicide. And I'm very well, thank you. Good. It's good to have you on, because I've been trying to get you on for a while now. I'm a I, know you're a busy, I know you're a busy, busy woman. So let's get straight into it. Christopher passed away 2011, that's correct. Yeah. Was there any signs or anything to show that he was having those suicidal thoughts? Or? Yeah, not at the time, but when you look retrospectively, mm-hmm. you can pick up that Christopher was pretty, pretty ill. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did, we did discuss it, we got him to go to the doctor, he went to the doctor, he was referred for post-traumatic stress to a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist gave him medication and between giving the medication and him dying, you know, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough, so Christopher took his life. Mm -hmm. And it does say on some (coughs) medications that you can go, even though you're there to help prevent suicide, but it says on the box you can go suicidal. Yes. So it's a sticky one for... Anybody it's difficult works. because there's there's nobody, no one at all wants them to die with suicide. Not the doctors, not the psychiatrists. It's, it's getting the balance of having somebody there to pick up people in their absolute distress. Mm-hmm. You know, if they feel like having suicidal thoughts, maybe they've been given prescription drugs and, you know, the suicide ideation comes into them. You know, so just get somebody there at that point to say it's okay we're here mm-hmm. as we're doing Chrissy's house it's, it's bridging a gap Chrissy's house is supposed to bridge a gap between asking for help and getting to the point that you've lost hope and I that, think that help isn't yeah, there and I think that's the major problem not a lot of people's asking for help they're too I don't know if they're too proud or it's the number one killer in the UK they now for me and it's, it's scary to think that nobody can ask for help or nobody because everybody's got problems, everybody's got demons, everybody's got some sort of thing that can trigger it. Yeah. And it's scary to think that there's a too pride, too much pride to ask for help or too embarrassed. And I don't think it's pride. There's there's a lot of factors in it. You know, people are despondent. They don't believe that anyone can help them when they're like that. Mm-hmm. You know, when they're in their darkest hour, they actually don't believe that there's anyone can help. Sometimes, like Christopher, when he's, he's went and asked for help, and was given medication, and f- probably, I don't know, I'm not in his head, nor was I in his head, uh, he thought, is this it? Is that, all, is that all there is? It's not all there is. Until you're affected by suicide, you actually don't know the, the amount of help that's there for people. Um, you know, the, the, there's, there's all sorts of grassroots charities, and there's major mental health charities, all working to prevent suicide, it, there is a stigma attached. It's, it's lessening. It's lessening, certainly, you know, because there's there's more awareness being raised all the time. But there is a stigma to what people worry about their jobs. Is it going to affect their jobs? Is it going to affect their life? Are they seen as, as being a weaker person that they, they, they haven't manned up? Probably the best way to man up is to speak up. Mm-hmm. You know, and get in touch with your own self, you know, be, be more true to yourself. Um, there's so many factors that come into play in so many different levels. Um, social media, addictions, just people not feeling good enough. People not feeling good enough. No feeling that they are enough. You know, the bar is, is raised so high for some people now. You know, they can they can go champagne Charlie's and think everything's okay, you know, front stage. But that's not maybe what's going on in their mind. So how how do how do they get for being the big guy that was out there, like all have saw jokes and everything else, what to admit that they're that guy sitting in their own feeling so isolated and so alone and so hopeless that nobody how how do we get that message to say, you know, you are worth it, you are enough? Mm-hmm. 
is there has to be a whole shift in people's attitudes. Mm -hmm. Not paying lip service to it, to actually doing it. Chrissy's house um, is the only place in Scotland we have that, uh, that's independent of NHS. I know that there's a crisis centre in Edinburgh. Uh, it's called Crisis that is attached to, I'm not sure, I think it's between NHS and Penumbra. That's another mental health service. We've got Sam H. They've got, they've, they've got houses to take people. Oddly enough, there's waiting lists, even for the, the third sector. There's waiting lists for it to be seen. The Chris's house, there's absolutely no waiting list. None. It's a very non-clinical environment. You've been in it, James. That's amazing. It's it's quite amazing. There was a big place held in Liverpool last week, James's place. Fabulous for guys to be able to go in and talk, you know, at leisure, at their ease. We've been doing it for three years here in Scotland, you know, without any big fanfare about it. Uh, and we do it very, very well. We've had over 700 people helped in Chrissy's house. And it's not, um, it's not a wee bit of anxiety. We take that a wee bit of anxiety seriously, just the same, because it's value in the person. Mm -hmm. But we've also had people in with, with rope marks around their neck where somebody's actually caught them before they've died. We've had serious interventions, very serious interventions. Um, very often we have to use a duty of care and call the police for people. Again, the police and the ambulance, very responsive. You know, everybody's doing the best that they can. There's now a new scheme, £4.2 million, pound, and more is coming. More, many more millions are coming into North Lanarkshire, where we are. Uh, distress brief intervention but there's still some hiccups in that as well they're trying to you know there's pilots and distress brief intervention so any help at all is good mm -hmm. we're not saying that what we do is the only way it's absolutely not there isn't a one fit for all no you know every, every, everyone's different exactly I've, I've got people attached to Chrissy's house as you know you've met them I've introduced them and the different techniques for your mental wellness or for people's mental wellness. I wouldn't be going to the gym. You know, it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. But I've got a young guy in Protein J, it's Mark Dixon, you've met him too. He, any, anyone from Chris's house, Mark will put them in and work with them so well. Free charge. You know, everybody, everybody wants to help, everybody wants to make a difference. I've got James McFadden, we use Wim Hof techniques. We've got Carol Roberts and a whole load of haveners. We use a lot, an awful lot of havening in Chris's house. We use CBT, we use DBT, we've got psychotherapy. The only thing that we won't use and the, the alternative therapists are uh, clinical hypnotherapy. It's, it's a bit of a minefield. Is that about NLP? No, clinical hypnotherapy is um, it's, it's a four-year course that so people the, go on. So if somebody comes in... Obviously, you've got these different techniques and methods. Yeah. How do you fit that method onto somebody and say, right, they maybe need this one or that one? Yeah. What's the difference? Depending on the trauma. If, if somebody's presenting with trauma mm -hmm. and it's an active trauma, say somebody's just found somebody that's died by suicide, you know, the flashbacks that they get, we can use havening as a technique to get that trauma depotentiated. And so can you speak about havening? Because a lot of people might not. I can, know I can that. a bit. But yes, because I know. Well, in 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 the amygdala, it all links with the parasympathetic system. In the brain. And the new the neural pathways. Now you've got fight, flight, or freeze. And when the amygdala, you know, when when the amper receptors come out in the amygdala, it puts you into fight, flight, or freeze. Now that's your adrenaline. Your adrenaline's rushing. So if that's constantly. It's like toxic stress. Stress is good. Adrenaline's good. We need it. But if it's toxic stress, it's it's moving your neural pathways to different ways. Like poison. Yeah, it's 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 infecting. It's causing sort of unwellness. That can be depotentiated through the haven and touch. You know, and it's all working in the the psychosensory. It's working with psych psychosensory and the neural pathways and taking the emotion, separating the emotion for that trauma. Now, EMDR does that as well, as an NLP can help with that as well. 
all of these, you have to respect that everybody that's working in these fields, all of them are effective as finding the right one for the right person. Mm -hmm. And when they come into Chris's house, you know, and they have a long chat, we can find out. And if it doesn't work, you know, we'll move them to another one. Mm -hmm. And we tell them that right for the off set. It's not the case of, oh, I'm moving you, it's not working. It's, how do you feel about that? We treat every single person on an individual basis, individual level. So immediately, just coming out of the surroundings of Chris's house, um, you see people's shoulders come down. You know, they, they start to relax, the tears come. They've arrived and they've got hope. And as long as there's a wee bit of hope, that's when the, the, their mindset starts working because they've asked for help and they're getting it now. Mm -hmm. That's the main priority is to ask first and, and uh -huh. to show that. We can't say first with it. Of course mm -hmm. we can, and that must, that's an upsetting thing as well because we spoke about the numbers of people jumping off um, Kingston Bridge and um, Erskine Bridge is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. constant and we don't obviously hear about it all the no. time but it's nearly every day yeah. and these numbers are terrifying it's not just um, homeless people it's people just giving up and just have had enough and to think that you're not good enough and you think you're better off away from everybody it, it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. do you know what I mean what age so what age was Christopher when he first passed 36 36 and he was your oldest yep. and we spoke earlier obviously the first two years was difficult very. And obviously when we see you now, we know the amazing things you're doing at Chris's house, you're that bubbly and happy and um, very soft spoken, me mm -hmm. and all loud, loud and daft and what to save the world, you're like, ah, James, calm down. I'm like, ah, right, okay. So you make me calm, but obviously it's, it's not been like that the first two years, obviously lying in your bed and... I just didn't go out of my just, bed. I was just lay on the couch with a blanket around me. Mm -hmm. I walked around the house with a blanket around me, a safety blanket. Um, I didn't really speak much. Some nights during the night I would go to the cemetery in my pyjamas. You know. <laughs> I said to my husband, my dad, you know, I said, there's people up in that cemetery during the night. What do you think they're doing that? <laughs> <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Same as me. Mm -hmm. um, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's when you think of the ripple effect of suicide. Now, we've got, we've got a close family, an immediately close family. And... We were all destroyed, devastated, but worse so the job that they had to keep me alive to stop me, my guilt as a mother that couldn't save her son. That was me. Then he's got a wee boy that's left. That's a child will think, why did why did my parent why was I not enough? Why did my parent leave me? And you know, Christopher adored his wee boy absolutely adored them but when people are in that mindset they think their families are better off without them they're a burden they're a burden do you know and that's that's the saddest thing if these people that died that died by suicide could see their funerals for the people that did care care do you know it was shocking mm. I would say there was nearer a thousand people at Christopher's funeral you know, it was it was massive. Absolutely, I don't know. Can't remember it, but mm -hmm. it put me in a very dark place. Very, very dark place. Uh, as as did his put his brothers and his aunties, his uncles, his cousins, his pals. That's a, that's a huge ripple. That I've to stand and asking the question: Why did why did I not speak to me? Mm -hmm. Why did I not see it? So does everybody blame themselves? Did you blame yourself at the start? Absolutely, and... absolutely. I blame myself for every scalp because I was a, I was a mum that scalped mm -hmm. rains back sides and more. <laughs> you know, that, that was that was the way it was 40 years ago, 43 years ago. Uh, especially with three boys that were just ploughing around about the floor when you're trying to actually get them up the, the shops and stuff. It, it's the way it is. Uh, the, the way it was, it was easy, it way. It was quicker. Uh, so every scalp, every row. Mm -hmm. You know, we were in the Waltons. Did you repeat that over and over in your head then? And oh man, oh man. Aye. Every, every wrong word, every argument. You torture yourself, mm. absolutely torture. Maybe if I did that, maybe if I, maybe that was me. You know, completely and utterly blame mm. yourself. 
I came to the bit that no matter what I did in bringing up my sons, I did the best I could at the time and the circumstance that I was in. You know, that's I have to accept that that's, there's nothing I can do about it. I loved my sons. I love my sons. Christopher loved his mother. It was... If, if, if I'd have been there during that night, if I wouldn't have, you know, if he'd been in my house or if I'd have been in his house, it wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's all lesson but yeah, and wise. So you, uh-huh. you, you can't, you, you keep yep. repeating it, yep. repeating it, and as sad as it is, the trauma that you've went through, you've saved 700 odd people, so sometimes that bad loss or that tragic loss can trigger you to go, do you know what, I'm going to do something about this. It's changed you as a person completely. Absolutely. Probably changed your family. And even though you're going to get these thoughts, well, natural, it's going to, you're going to think about the past. Mm-hmm. It happens. But like I say, the first week you opened Chrissy's house, you had seven people walk in the door who were suicidal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Which is crazy. And, <laughs> and, you, and, it's, and even though the fuck ups I've done in the past, I've still got to thank it. A lot of shit I'm not proud of, I've got to thank it because it's made as a man I'm other now. And it's making the part changes. Of your journey. In the stage. Yes, it's, your it journey. it's all part of the journey. And everybody's cards are dealt differently, but it's not about the cards you're dealt, it's about how you play them. We can sit there and we can, and you've got to grieve. You've got to sit on the couch. Absolutely. You're not just going to walk about and high no. five people the first week or the first year. No. You're going to have that pain the rest of your life. Absolutely. And we've spoken about it before when I had Pamela and Rowan. It's not about times a healer. You adapt. You learn the pain. It's different. Yeah, yeah, you live with it. Yeah, you live with it and you learn how to write yeah. and move on with and try and help mm-hmm. others. Yeah. And the results that you are getting in Chris's house are unbelievable. I know, and beautiful. I just think and I hope more people get involved because it's still quite early days. It's still quite baby yeah it's, it's, it's growing but the amount of people are getting involved the amount of people behind it because i worked with jim and i came to visit his last week it's about breathing techniques and we spoke about that earlier yeah. the breathing techniques is the wim hof method yeah wim hof lost his wife to suicide for anybody that doesn't know wim hof's got uh, documentaries on youtube and they're saying that he's obviously his methods are helping the world people with depression fear anxiety yeah. just with breathing techniques and I struggle with still struggling anxiety and I bark my demons every day. And when I done this class last Friday, I don't know if it lasted 30 minutes or an hour. I felt so calm. I was with my big pal James and we sat there and we're breathing and everybody sat up and everybody was so calm and so happy. And we left that class so happy just for breathing techniques. And I felt if everything was released and it might sound crazy. Check out this guy, Wim Hof. It's unbelievable yeah. what this man's doing. He can control his body temperature. He can control his... He's like subcon. He's not subconscious. He's conscious mind, and he's controlling the central nervous system just with his breathing techniques. Yeah. The guy's running up mountains. It's scientifically yeah, proven. Now it's scientifically yeah. proven because in the past we're trying to make it as if he's crazy. No. The, the mainstream media ain't going to promote this because it's natural and it's free. They don't want that. Do you know what I mean? The pharmaceuticals are yeah. going to make money. So Wim Hof and, and Jim's an amazing man because Jim used to do Iron Man's and I don't know if he did judo or whatever. Three is 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 um, karate. Uh-huh. I is is. I don't know what Danny is or Bailey's. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Jim, Jim, Jim had to arrive at that through a journey of searching as well mm-hmm. for, for his betterness to get rid of his demons. Um, Wim Hof obviously started that after he lost his wife and was left with the children. Now there's a big Wim Hof weekend coming up in Wisher, uh, the first weekend in August. So we're, we're going to be banging into promoting that. Um the Havening, um, under the auspices of Carol Robertson and the Rudens, they, they, they developed the Havening Technique, Paul McKenna. All these methods are fabulous. They're new and people are, are sceptical skeptical and they're cynical. I'm watching them working. Mm-hmm. I'm watching them working. I've got, I've got four Haveners in Chris's house. Mm-hmm. And they're working alongside your your mainstream therapists. We use holistic therapies like Reiki, reflexology, aromatherapy, everything, everything combined. You know, there's something for, for mm-hmm. to to suit somebody. We can't we can't be losing. The breathing techniques are unbelievable. I'm going to yeah. do the ten week course with Jim, and I'm going to bring it to Glasgow and try and listen. It might not be for everybody. And, but it seems to be working. I've only did it once and the way I felt after it was unbelievable because he says, release, because I build up all this anxiety and the yes. persona and the big man acting, really, I'm just a fucking scared wee boy. Do you know what I mean? It's I swear. Uh, sorry, <laughs> she's told me not to swear, but that's strike one. I'm sure I can get two or three in before the end of the day. Um, I just think the breathing techniques and it's, 
he, there was a sense when he was saying if you keep breathing because I was getting tingles in my hand and I felt as if I was seizing up but he's saying just go through it and go through it just with deep, deep, deep <laughs> breaths and I was, I was I was worried but I don't know if that's the fear because in my mind I'm thinking they're all looking at me that was the insecurities uh, kicking in and uh -huh. I just let go and then everybody sat up and it's unbelievable and I'm hoping to get this course done and then and bring it to Glasgow because there's <laughs> so many people just with these breathing techniques that can take control yeah. of your mind Brilliant. again and, and take Absolutely. away the anxiety and the, the, the fear, the depression. It's unbelievable. I know. So I for know. the, if you, do you work on these breathing techniques as well? Hi, you I do was, them? I was in one and I haven't, I haven't put a lot of effort in them because I, my time, I'm time constrained mm -hmm. and people say I should take time but when I'm taking time I've got a new grandson. Mm -hmm. I've got a new Christopher son. Mm -hmm. No, he's not my son. He's my grandson and I'm sorry. She has got a new grandson. Oh, I'm getting the most beautiful day ever. Fifteen I'll times say last that's week. It, <laughs> it's the standard joke now. No, obviously. Uh -huh. Did I tell him that I've got a new mm. grandson? I'm so over the moon. But and she's called Christopher, uh, Christopher Andrew. So I was in one of the breathing classes with Jim, and I watched a man. He was in. He was in my group of adolescents they were a bit troubled and I brought Jim in to do the, the breathing method with him honestly there was a man going into this breathing that wouldn't be come out yet and I said Jim is, is he okay <laughs> do we need to get a doctor for this he was so he was like it was like spasms mm -hmm. he was going into and he got me he was totally blown away with the, the, the breathing mm -hmm. he was totally blown he says that's just his head was clear Everything. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's all good, but you have to respect as well that there is a need. Some people get very, very mentally ill mm -hmm. and they need medical attention as well. Of course, and that's what I'm saying with suicide, uh -huh. and I'm not against it. Yeah. I'm not a doctor, but no. I keep no. saying the medication, listen, Work if it together. can, if, it can uh -huh. if it's if you're yeah. ready to go suicidal if it can pull you back a couple of steps to yeah. maybe sort you out and, and look at the bigger picture but for me medication does numb your pain it suppresses your feelings and emotions where uh -huh. you're not really handling it so eventually it's eventually going to build up maybe the liver kidneys you yeah. don't know what all that shit's doing to your insides as well I do know. you know what I mean I know so with the breathing techniques is it sending all the oxygen is it more oxygen that goes to the brain is it how does it's it your whole body's getting oxygenated uh -huh. mm. so that's where you're feeling more alive more energy I see a big similarity with Havening, the way um, it's Havening touch. the brain work, Havening touch. touch? Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, the brain, it's, there's a wee bit of EMDR, I've moved in. Did you used to be a psychologist? No, I was never a psychologist. Well, you know, no, I but now? No, 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 no. No? No, 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 not at all. That's, there's big differences in that, no, no, no. No. So what did you used to, when you said, is well, that? I studied, I, I studied, you studied that? <laughs> studied right. social science. Mm -hmm. I studied social science, um, so it's gave me a good foundation for understanding mm -hmm. when people are talking and, you know, when they're talking about the brain and the parts right. of the brain and stuff. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of courses. I'm not, I'm a mammy. Right. <laughs> I'm just a mammy. Mm -hmm. No, I'm no psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the Cali up there, Glasgow Cali. That's a snob, uh, yeah. I'm not a snob. She's a snob. No. If you, want to go to Snobber, <laughs> if you want to go to Snobber, you need to go to Glasgow or Strathclyde. That's <laughs> so, no, I'm not a uni snob. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. It gave me the background. Understanding it. I was a sales rep. Mm -hmm. I was a cleaner in my mm -hmm. time. You know, I'm no anything. Mm. I'm just somebody that lost her son and decided that... Enough's enough. Do but something I'm, about it. I'm going to say you're not anything because like I say, Chrissy's house, it's 700 people and that's... That's momentum. Oh, but that's, that's a team. Of course, but... You that's a team of volunteers. I know, I know you're trying to be humble I've, and nice, but... I'm not trying to be humble. You, you I've got the vision that mm -hmm. I wanted. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I had a vision. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting that vision into play. Yeah, you've put it into action. Uh -huh. But I couldn't do it without the people at work. Mm -hmm. For nothing in Chris's house. What's the ages? For, from what age to oldest? Is Can it I tell you if the child, a parent's coming in with a child at nine? Shit. It's getting seen to be calms, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And we've had a woman at 80. So there is no a socioeconomic a socioeconomic category. I was I was out with the local councillor for our area 
and people jumped to, is it drugs, is it drink, is it, oh, they've had depression for years. There isn't, there isn't a reason that we can pinpoint. You know, I took her around to one of Christopher's pal's graves. That's really standing there with his cloak and gown on. Is that lack of education? No. There isn't. What about the millionaires that are taking their lives? Mm -hmm. Is that lack of money? Is that social deprivation? But there is big factors, as in the social deprivation and the, the inhumanity in this country at the minute. You know, and the, the divide and the poverty. Poverty has got a big impact on people's wellness. Mm -hmm. Hunger, homelessness. It's, stress. It's causing toxic stress. It's causing toxic stress. The need, the need to keep up with the Joneses, with people with their kids and stuff, it's, it's, it's massive. It's peer pressure. Absolutely massive. Who do you think the root, the main root of the cause is, though, for the numbers for, for men? Why do you think men is higher than women? It's like you say, men find it more difficult to open up and talk because our culture is like... You're a big baby, you're standing there greeting like a big lassie, if they're, they're, they're tiny. Boys aren't supposed to cry. Mm -hmm. Boys have got the same emotions as women. I greet all the time now. Aye, that's because you found yourself. You found something to greet for. I'm tough. <laughs> I'm fucking toss my path, I swore again, yeah. sorry. No, <laughs> 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 no, I see all the time. Man. I agree all the time. I see green at tampon adverts and oh, no. <laughs> turned into a woman, man. Uh -huh. No, but no, that that's that's men that's is a uh, well. I think I think it's it's a lot to do with. It. But men have got a lot of pressure on them to mm. be the provider. You know, get right back to to cavemen. Mm. You know, hunters and gatherers. Men have got a lot of pressure, pressure to be the strong one. But it's no weak. It's no weak to to identify your emotions and say, do you know what? Actually, I could cry. Mm -hmm. Do you know, it's no weak to be a role model that cries when they're sad. It's natural. It's no weak to be a role model that cuddles your adult child. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I walk in and say, I need a hug. I hug everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody hugs me now. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Where do, you, do you think this can, do you think the schooling can come into play with this? Absolutely, they have to educate for an early age. Mm -hmm. yep. For the mindset and the natural stuff about energies and living and understanding life that everything comes within and working on the brain and the mindset, even working on death, I believe. I know it's, it's part of life. Sad, and we've got to kind of accept it because when people die, we go right off the rails. I'd, I, especially me back in the past, I, I, I couldn't handle it, so I had behind the drink the drugs because it numbed me, it made me feel I don't care. But looking back now, I was so weak, man, I was so vulnerable because I didn't understand death. I'm thinking, I always thought people live forever. You kind of don't see it, and then once one goes, two goes, and then I'm kind of just, it happens. Queen, I've got a song for that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Queen me a song about that. Who wants to live forever? Mm -hmm. Who wants to live forever? Exactly. Not, you know? But you, at that stage, when you, you don't really understand death, when somebody dies, you don't know how to handle it. Well, there's different cultures and there are different religions that you're sort of step. I, I remember when I was wee, my papa died and was getting buried the day that I made my first communion. And I had to go and view my papa's body and gave him a kiss. You're terrified, you're seven. Mm -hmm. But in the Catholic religion, in my in my years, we were we were we were engulfed. Him did I you to go in and sit in the rosaries every night did they get buried? Mm -hmm. You know what the coffin's lying open, you're you, deep you, body sitting there. I know. <laughs> you know, you know but you take that as that's not people now would be horrified, absolutely horrified. People are taking selfies now. Oh, no, <laughs> don't you? It's a fucking sex society we're in sometimes. No, I definitely. I just think, but for the suicide thing, it is massive. It's really massive, and it's. I, I think a lot of more people. Are, There's no are need for it. There's no need for it. And that's, it's, but that's a lot more true. people are opening up to it. Yeah. And the numbers have dropped this year. Am I, am I, is that true? One percent. They say it dropped. I think you'll find in this year's figures they'll they'll have gone up again in Wisher. Mm -hmm. Just lately, between March and 
me. There were seven deaths just in Russia. Then that's a small place. Yeah, seven suicide deaths just in that area. And surrounding it, you know, just the the, the villages surrounding it, yeah. Russian remains. Um, so the numbers are even higher in Glasgow then? There's been two in shots that I know of within the past four weeks. Yeah. It's sad to think people can go, that it is, it's heartbreaking. It they, were, they were boys at 16, 17, 19. Whole life in front of them. They haven't even started to live, you know. It's, it's heartbreaking for this. Heartbreaking for the community. It's certainly heartbreaking for me that's sitting in Chris's house. Because that will still break on the doors. Well, absolutely. You know that's there absolutely. Why is there nothing like this in Glasgow? Why is there nothing like this in the big cities? The suicides, the suicide shelters are you, the places where people can go. There's and, this drop in centre in the Samaritans in the town centre, but I think it's only up to 10 o'clock. Oh, fuck's sake, so what? Nobody commits suicide at 11 or 12 o'clock at night, do you know what I mean? I couldn't. Some of the doctors they don't do it after six either. Do you know what I mean? So. There needs to be... They're trying to change things, that's what they're trying to change. change it, though? I said, I've loved it, but the, the, the thing is, you have to remember, and again, you have to remember that there's people what I know right, Professor O'Connor, he's been 20 years studying suicide research. You can't dismiss the fact that people have studied years to try and get a solution to this. Mm -hmm. Doctors have studied for seven years to become doctors. They don't specialise in suicide. They don't specialise in depression. Psychiatrists do. But the, the, the brain is so difficult. They're guinea pigs when you're talking about medication. Mm -hmm. But these guys have studied and worked hard to get to where they're at. You know, there's a certain snow brain nursing and everybody that's you know that's that's what and that's that's their vocation, so they think they believe in what they're doing, but they've got the power because they've got the validation science and mm -hmm. you know university masters and PhDs and everything else behind them. For for a wee mammy here like me to go up and say that's not working, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not going to take kindly like that. Yeah. But people that have got compassion will say, do you know what, working together, that should help. Mm -hmm. There is other ways. It's all about compassion and empathy. It's about every, getting everybody together. Like I say, Absolutely. Too many chiefs. Absolutely. A lot of chiefs. And you find that in charity as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's too many egos as well at times. Mm -hmm. uh, I find it in Chris's house. People come into Chris's house and they think they can do better. You know, so they go away and, uh, you know, ah, she's, she's this and she's that and she's... Mm -hmm. I'm no anything. I'm doing the best I can. But do you know, I, I feel that some saying to some people, go and pick one of your veins. Mm -hmm. You pick your vein. Pick a vein. Mm -hmm. But that's, this is a society we're in where people are, do you know, people are judging and people are trying to, absolutely. How, if somebody's trying to do well and doing the best that I can and doing what you can yeah. to save lives and, and like I say, the results speak for themselves and this is because mm -hmm. I believe that's guilt. So when we were doing the homeless stuff and that and all you get wankers just saying bad stuff, I believe that's guilt because they ain't get the balls to do it or, they, they know deep inside that they should be helping out me. Why are you sitting behind a screen or why are you talking about somebody else that's trying to do a good deed? Mm -hmm. Just because, but like doctors, listen, they're amazing. I'm not trying to take anything away from no, them. No. They do research the through books. Absolutely. And they might not understand energies or positive vibes because uh -huh. it's no scientific Some do. Yet. Some do. Yeah, some, but the majority are, mm -hmm. this is what I believe in. I read this for this book, this medication here, but you've got to remember, every prescription they give you, they're getting paid for it. They don't want natural remedies. Go for a nice walk. Start eating cleaner. Start surrounding yourself with positive people. These wee small steps do help. You're talking to somebody who was like that as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It, it, it just distance yourself from negativity, which is difficult. But even cleaning up your diet, going for a walk. If you're feeling that condensed and stuck, and every, see if you go on in nature, it it can make the world a good, a better place because you start seeing things. You go, wait a minute, the world is a bigger place. And I'm not saying it works for everybody, but the small steps through natural remedies and through kindness and, and being better, trying to become a better person, which is difficult. It's fucking hard, man, especially in the society we're in. Like I say, you're still doing good things and yet people are still getting wee digs or might say this and might say that. And is it doctors and other people that are saying that it's not working or do they, do you get I don't, that? No, I don't really get it off. It's like, well, you know, I had a paramedic come in and say one day when I had to phone them in, somebody disclosed that they'd taken an overdose around an MR door. The 
disclosed to take an overdose and I phoned paramedics. We kind of do anything about somebody taking an overdose. We kind of detox people. We kind of, you know, we we can't. So <laughs> the paramedic says, I think you need to see the professionals then. Mm. So, okay, that's okay. My, my, my psychotherapist having not studied, mm-hmm. having not worked for it, having to get nine, ten years' experience, 15 years' experience working in the counselling sector or whatever. So, it's a bit of an ego tag, isn't it? Whatever it is. But it's, we're new. We're new, so people are, people are sceptical about anything that's new. No They're cynical. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Like I say, uh-huh. try these breathing They're techniques. Cynical. Look up the man Wim Hof. Look, and he comes across crazy, but in my opinion, we're all nuts. We're all fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, and then we, why, well, do you know what I mean? He, these, that day uh, lying now is no popular for saying what is normal. Do you know what I mean? What is normal? We're all nuts. We're, we're all, we're, he, was, he, was, he was a classical psychiatrist but in Bedlam, Bethlehem. That was a hospital. And he said, what is, what is normal? Mm-hmm. We actually have to ask ourselves that question. Mm-hmm. What is normal? Is it societal normal? Mm-hmm. Is it the norms of society? You know, there's, there's boundaries, there's laws, there's rules in society. But you Do you know, think that's everybody trying to fit in with everybody else and trying to be everybody oh, yeah. else instead oh, of being yeah. an individual and creativity? As yep. soon as you're born, we've all got a gift, mm-hmm. we've all got greatness, we've all got something special, but mm-hmm. everybody's trying to compete with each other. I'm not saying everybody, but if you take, take a step outside the box, you realise, who am I? Nobody knows who the fuck the other anymore because they've wrapped ourselves around in so many layers. They forget, they've become so disconnected and I think that's a big part of in your gut feeling, you know, something's right. It starts in right. schools and there's wee shifts going on in schools. It starts in schools, you, you, you go into nursery and you go into school, everybody gets sat down with the same book. That's, that's assuming that every single brain in that school is at the same level. So that's the assumption that starts off in. And then you've got other kids falling back, you've got other kids that can't read properly, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's dyslexia or whatever else. Mm-hmm. But just because they can't read the book doesn't mean they can't do something else. No, no, but that, this is this is what society does. Mm-hmm. Conditions, conditions to people to achieve constantly. Mm-hmm. People aren't achieving. Mm-hmm. They're not good enough. They're going to get chipped away, aren't they? At schools, that's what you use, the left mm-hmm. side part of your brain, which is numbers, memorisation, the right side's your creativity and individuality. There's a need, obviously there's a need. Mm-hmm. You know, we're progressing. We've, we've progressed so far with science and, and education and stuff. Yeah, we're so backward on it as well. I think we're going backwards as mm-hmm. human beings. Mm-hmm. We've, we've, we've yep. progressed and we've advanced so far that yep. we've hit a standstill. Yep. We've kind of forgot why we're on this fucking planet. Mm-hmm. We don't, listen, we don't know if we came from monkeys or we're avatars or that we can go around in circles saying we're aliens. We, we don't know. We, ju- we just need to agree that love, compassion, honesty, all the natural traits in life is the way yep. that we should be. And listen, I still get angry and upset. I, I, I see people and I think to myself, that's a human being. Yeah, I think to myself, well, I'd love to punch fuck at you. And that's what I see inside here. And I go, right, wait a minute, he's not really doing my nothing. I'm being honest. I'm, I can do all these breathing techniques in yoga, but I still get angry and agitated. Do you know what I mean? It's it's natural to be it's a natural unhappy. Emotion. It's natural to be angry, but it's just about trying to channel it into a, mm-hmm. a better understanding and a better life and, and feel your emotions. Where am I feeling this? Why am I feeling like that? Mm-hmm. Which is a very difficult thing to do. It's the thing with parents now as well. They're, they're doing everything to make sure their children don't be sad. You know, they're, they're getting frantic because they're, I don't understand it. It's everything. We, get, we buy them everything we do. We spend time and we do this, do that. We'll always be sad. It's a it's a natural emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, well all you know it's natural to be sad mm-hmm. at times. It's natural to be angry, it's natural to be happy. Who do you think's the main trigger point for it all though? There must be something that's triggering it to for the numbers to be higher that for male as well. There must be what do you think is a trigger point, even but you're though asking for a, a, a specific sp- thing? There's no specific mm-hmm. trigger. That's like saying that all these people have got the same triggers if you're asking mm-hmm. for one trigger. Mm-hmm. There's none. Like the mindset or the see when people come in, do you ask them? The like, mindset way beyond anything that we understand, James, because mm-hmm. we're still here. Mm-hmm. Do you know, they're, they're going, they're going further. They're going further. What I know, only for people that have made serious attempts on their life coming into Chris's house, are they don't often have a recollection of before they actually did the act Aye. So they, they don't can't remember it it's like a blackout it's like a blackout so it's, it's no place that we've been mm-hmm. so we can't understand it because we've not been there mm-hmm. 
I don't know what what like Professor O'Connor is is speaking to. You know, if if he gets to that, he's probably more. He's the man that do this su suicidal Where research. Uh, Glasgow, you know. I'd like to get him in here. Uh, Hard man to get, but yeah. he's, he's just had a big, he's, he's working with Sam H, that Scottish Association of mm -hmm. Mental Health, on a big study on why men in particular. You know, his work, his, his work, his work influences and can influence the government procedures. He's highly involved in distress brief intervention. His whole thing is about suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. You know, his whole work is researching what causes it. Now, he's been doing it for 20 years, but I've not got a cause. Mm -hmm. So here you're sitting asking me mm -hmm. what triggers I'm. I'm a mammy. I think we could all. <laughs> I think we could then be con we, we always be searching. It could just be absolutely the way of life. Well, but that's that's the thing with suicide. You never mm -hmm. get the answer to why. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Even if they write a letter, it makes sense to the person that's written the letter mm -hmm. on that night mm -hmm. or on that morning or on that day. It makes sense to them when they're writing at the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting. If I'm sitting as a mother looking at letters which I didn't get a letter mm -hmm. as such. I get sporadic notes. Um, there isn't a good enough excuse in there for my son to die. Aye. There isn't a good enough excuse for the letter. It still leaves with the family. Why? Why? We could have, we could have worked to that. We could have fixed that. Mm -hmm. Do you know, some people will say, well, there's nothing we could do. Do you demons need to use the... And that's what they need to say, and that's what they need to feel to get some semblance of peace within themselves. But in actual fact, the way it, this is my opinion, is that it doesn't matter what they say, if it's £50,000 a day, if it's... I've committed a real seed, there's nothing can be fixed. Mm -hmm. Nothing. But you so, get to that stage... So why would some... Yeah. I, so they're not thinking that but I'm actually a burden, I'm, I'm going to bring trouble to my family, I'm, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter what it is, mm -hmm. it can be fixed. But they don't think that the the, 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 the suicide person, the person that's, that's died by suicide, hasn't thought that out. Mm -hmm. they, wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't inflict that, that pain on their family. They wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So do you think there's a wee bit of chemical imbalance as well with the mindset? Oof. Everything can be the brain as well, isn't it? Aye. The brain can trigger a lot of things, and the brain's a tricky thing that we're still trying to study. And like I say, Absolutely. they might You're never so find dances because no, no. I know if you hit drink or drugs, then it can be a trauma. Maybe you've been abused or younger. Maybe your dad was an alcoholic. They kind of know why that stuff is not mean. But for the suicide thing, they're still that's too clear, too cut and dry. Uh, you know, we know that, that we know that ACEs, that's adverse childhood effects. We know that that causes trauma. We, we knew that for John Bowlby's theory in the eighties. John Bobby is, is a psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, he did the, the study that, that proved maternal deprivation, the lucky bonding with mothers and sons. Or mo mothers and, I'm saying sons because I've got sons. Mothers and children, you know, mm -hmm. that had adverse childhood effects on the, the child. Mm -hmm. Then they did the study in the latchkey kids in the 90s. Now we've got resilience and aces aware. And I've looked we know what's wrong, but who's going to stop it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's the resources to stop it? Mm -hmm. all, all these techniques like Wim Hof, um, the Rudens, Havening, they're all new. People are, are gradually, it's gradually creeping in. It's a massive shift. We're looking for like a quick fix. We're, we're even doing, we're looking for a quick fix. Mm -hmm. But we're saying, like, we know this works. Take it. Mm -hmm. But people aren't ready to take things all no, the time. People aren't ready. They have to, to go their journey. Uh -huh, uh -huh. and they have to go their journey. Mm -hmm. So, oddly enough, people and you've got life coaches that, that that are trying their best to change people's lives. You know, we can do this, mm -hmm. do this. I was there, and this is good. That's a big journey before that life coach gets to where it's at. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got people that think if they pay for counselling, it must be better counselling. Most of my therapists have got their own clinics. Mm -hmm. But they give their time freely to Chris's house. Do you understand? It's like my Kim, she's CBT and working with DBT. We're just in the process of getting a BSAP registration. And, What's DBT? Uh, dialectical behavioural therapy. It's like a long therapy, but we, we, we try, we're not trying to be a mental health mm -hmm. organisation. We're a crisis organisation mm -hmm. and we support greatly people that have lost 
people at suicide because most deaths in Chris's house have lost a close member, or if not a close member, a friend to suicide. Mm -hmm. So you can understand that a wee bit more uh -huh. pain in the heart. So uh, we, 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 we hold a lot of people mm -hmm. safely through support groups, mm -hmm. through one-to-one -one counselling, through yoga. We mm -hmm. do yoga in Chris's house as well. We do art therapy. Mm -hmm. Do you know, there's, there's so much. We, we open things out to the community. There's so much that people trying. So there isn't one trigger, that, and there isn't one remedy either. Right. There's no panacea. There's no an even easy panacea for it. Although every single therapist thinks theirs is the panacea. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, that's what they believe in, and that's what they, they work in. Mm -hmm. So who are we to disrespect that? You know, if that's if it works, mm -hmm. it works. And that's that's that's. And I think yeah, for everybody that's working on your team as well, if they've lost somebody to suicide, you're probably keeping yourselves in a good place as well mm. because you've all been through it as well. So yeah. not only you're helping others, people coming on, you're all helping yourselves, which is good for people that's watching. How for anybody that's in this struggle, or for anybody that's got a suicidal thoughts, or for anybody that's lost suicide, how can they get in contact? How can they maybe? Well, we've got. Um, a Facebook page that's got about nine and a half thousand people following it. Mm -hmm. um, they can private mail the page. They can come onto our website, email us, our phone. If I, if we're not in the office, the phone comes through to my house. So I'm always on call. Mm -hmm. uh, they can walk in the door, as they do. 24 7. No, they can't walk in oh, the door 24 7. 7. I'm not saying that. So I go, don't, don't show up at all sorts of hours. Just, just for now, who's fat? I go home. No, you, <laughs> you phone the number, Dave, 01236 766 755. Mm -hmm. I go home, but the phone gets transferred mm -hmm. through to my mobile. We'll answer the phone. Mm -hmm. If if she comes through to my answer machine, it's because I'm on the phone to somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Samaritans, there's breathing space. All these people are there to listen. Mm -hmm. All these people are there to listen. Um, I just spoke about Steve Shaw. He's trying to get the the phone lines uh, on the bridges in Glasgow, mm -hmm. so that people can at least get a chance to speak to somebody before mm -hmm. they decide to put themselves over a bridge. Yeah, you were talking about this a man called uh -huh. Steve Shaw, who there's it's so Glasgow many people jump off there. bridges, mm -hmm. but we don't really hear about it. So he's yeah. trying to set up something with the government to get phones put there so they can lift the phone and they get maybe, straight through yeah, to the yeah, Samaritans yeah. who are, who are on call 24 hours a day mm -hmm. yep. which is unbelievable to think that there's so many people do that and we don't we don't hear I about know. it and we were saying we see that boat driving up and doing all the time I just thought it was I don't know I thought it was there I just didn't think it was looking for bodies every day it's Mr Patrick I think Pat, uh -huh. Patrick I can't remember it's in Patrick so for anybody that's um, maybe too scared or they think that there's no hope yeah, completely unknown we... missing Chris's house mm -hmm. as you know yourself our building hasn't even got decals in the window mm -hmm. we've, we've no signage yeah I actually have to come with our address and that's so that people feel mm -hmm. comfortable that people don't know that they're coming into that building but they, thought, they could be coming into volunteer they could be coming into anything mm -hmm. right, but, but it works yeah, and so for anybody that thinks check it out man Twitter Facebook Chris's house and what you're doing yeah, and I think it's unbelievable and it's amazing. Like I say, I've met you and the staff. Um, you're a bit crazy about the rest of it. Right? <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. On. What you've done, honestly, it's it's amazing. And even though the trauma you've done, it shows that, listen, bad shit happens, but we can also make good things happen from it. And I think you're an amazing woman. No doubt we'll be doing a lot of stuff in the future. And I really appreciate you coming on. and I love you to death, man. Thanks, yeah, James. Amazing for coming on. And hopefully people get a few things from this. And like I say... Never give up, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. See you.